Join me in standing as we pray, please. Our most kind and ever-loving Father who art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here into your house today. We thank you for bringing those who are online here as well. We pray, dear Father, as we attend this anointing gospel series that you have prepared for us, I pray that you will fill each heart with your Holy Spirit, whether they are here in the sanctuary or online. I pray that you will fill us, dear Father. You will open our hearts, open our minds, that we will be receptive to the word that you have prepared for us. I pray that you will touch the speaker as you put the words into his mouth, Pastor Dutton, that you will grant him all that he needs to deliver your word with clarity, with conviction. And that as we receive your word tonight, Lord, I pray that we will receive healing. We will receive your anointing. We will receive your special touch. And hearts will be convicted to give their lives to you if they haven't done so as yet. I pray that everything that will be said and done today tonight will be done to your name's honor and glory. Hasten the footsteps of those who are coming, Lord, and help us to receive an extra special blessing tonight that you have stored for us. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering. For these and all and other mentioned mercies I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Anointing Gospel Series, which is hosted by the Andrews Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church. An extra special welcome to our online viewers who continue to join us on the various YouTube channels. Each evening, you join us for the Anointing Gospel Series. And for that, we are grateful. We welcome you. We appreciate you. you we ask you to share the link with a friend and become a digital disciple. Our online community, please feel free to join us in sanctuary if you're close by. A, a blessing certainly awaits. And for those of us in sanctuary, welcome. A delightful blessing awaits us all. Any first time visitors this evening? Not yet. For our visitors in the chat, please feel free to type visitor in the chat if you're visiting for the first time on our YouTube channel. I know someone is monitoring, so they will indicate to me those persons who are visiting on our online platform. To everyone, I want to remind you of a special text in Romans 15, verse 13, reading from the New International Version, and it reads, May the God of hope fill you all with fill you may the god of hope fill you all with joy and peace as you trust in him so trust as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters when we come into the presence of the lord we will be refreshed agreed certainly the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we go into his presence, we exchange the heaviness for joy. We leave the cares of work, the cares of home life, and we expect joy as we become refreshed. When we go into the presence, we exchange our morning for the dawn of a new day. We are delighted to have you all joining us this evening in sanctuary and online. I pray that you'll be blessed, refreshed, and energized after this evening's presentations. At this time, we'll be having a short presentation from our Health Ministries Department by Dr. Daria Cornwall, and after which our offertory will be done by Brother Kevin Davis. While the offertory is being done, the Women's Chorale of Andrews Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church is in the building. Everybody say amen. I am so delighted to see them. They're looking so refreshing in their bright colors. So we're looking forward to that presentation. Dr. Cornell, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to my online friends and to all those on their way to the sanctuary. Good evening and hurry up and come. So, you know, I'm going to do a short nugget on magnesium. I was amazed at the benefits of magnesium. And I say, you know, God really knows what he's doing, you know. He puts these things in the foods that we eat and stuff and so on. We don't even know that we should be eating up. That's why he gives us food to eat and stuff and we don't know when we don't eat them what we're missing out on. Harmony Wellness introduced me to magnesium recently. Thanks, Harmony. So I'm going to tell you about magnesium quickly. So magnesium, go back, is involved in over 300 biochemical activities in our bodies. Over 300, I was amazed. Put shortly. Magnesium is needed for healthy bones, nerves, muscles. And if you don't have it, you could be at risk to hypertension, diabetes, stroke, heart attack, and osteoporosis. So that's put in a nutshell. So I'm going to read through the list now. So what does magnesium help with? In a, I'm going to go down them a little more slowly in two minutes. Magnesium helps to create and boost energy levels. 
It helps to calm your nerves, reduce stress and anxiety. It treats sleeplessness, insomnia, and helps you to fall asleep. It helps with digestion by relieving constipation and neutralizing stomach acid. You hear that online? It helps to relieve muscle aches and spasms. It helps to improve insulin sensitivity and help to control diabetes, type 2 diabetes. It helps to support healthy blood pressure levels and prevent hypertension. You know that? It helps to prevent migraine, headaches. It helps with the structural development of the bones. You need it for your bones. It helps with the synthesis of DNA and RNA and master antioxidant glutathione. It helps to regulate the levels of calcium, potassium, and sodium. It helps with heart health, healthy heart and normal heartbeat. It helps to prevent and reverse osteoporosis. So, after all of that, those were the benefits. So, if you don't have magnesium in your system over a, period, a long period of time, what could happen to you? What can you feel in your body? What are the common symptoms of magnesium deficiency? Weakened immune system. Muscle cramps. So, sometimes when you have enough cramps, it's magnesium you're missing. Impotence. You know what impotence is? It's not importance, you know. Importance. You may know what this is. That is some of the things that could happen when you don't have plenty of magnesium in this right amount of magnesium in your system. E yes, eclampsia and preeclampsia. These two terms are for a type of hypertension that you get in pregnancy. And do you know? I never knew this, but in medical school and in medicine. People who come in with high, bad high blood pressure in pregnancy and get this fits from the high blood pressure, which is the eclampsia and the preeclampsia where they're seeing twinkle, 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 and their foot swelling up and all of that. We treat them with magnesium. We infuse magnesium into them. That is how we treat it, but, you know, we never see it in the reverse. That, that is, you should eat more magnesium, get more magnesium in your system. So we treat it with that. Other symptoms now, hypertension. Cardiovascular disease, kidney damage, liver damage. These are symptoms of decreased magnesium, migraine headaches, multiple sclerosis, glaucoma, Alzheimer's. All of these are things that happen when you don't have enough hypertension um, magnesium. Nutritional deficiencies in certain vitamins like vitamin K, B1, calcium and potassium, restless leg syndrome, worsen premenopausal syndrome, symptoms, you have worsened period pain and put things, behavioral disorders, mood swings, depression, anxiety, insomnia, difficulty sleeping, osteoporosis, and recurrent bacterial and fungal infection due to low nitric oxide level. Magnesium helps to improve your nitric oxide level. You understand? So what are some of the foods that are rich in magnesium? This is the last slide. Green leafy vegetables. Most green leafy vegetables have it. Not on the slide. It's like salmon has a, high, a good amount of magnesium. Dairy products have a good amount of magnesium. But these are the plant-based sources. Avocado. Pumpkin seed. You see the little pumpkin in the corner? Spinach. Banana. Black beans. Black of all the beans, black bean is the best for magnesium. Watermelon, almond, broccoli, Irish potato, all of these are rich in magnesium. I thought it was good to tell you about this because I was shocked when Harmony introduced me to this. Thanks, Harmony. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you learned tonight something about magnesium. I now invite or deacons to collect our offering. Let us pray. Our loving Father and Savior, we indeed come before you now to present our gifts to you, to give sacrifices of praise and honor to your name's glory. Bless the offering as it is being collected, Lord, and we know that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Help us, O oh God, to also give you our lives and our hearts and our minds. May it be focused upon you continually. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for hearing. Thank you for being in our presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. That was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Women's Chorale, thank you. Thank you so much for blessing our hearts. It is my privilege to introduce our speaker, which we have gotten to know over these past three weeks very well. Amen? So we're aware of his various roles as teacher and preacher and counselor. Correct? Am I correct? Wonderful. So I won't go through a lot of that. What I will say is that Pastor Dottin has enjoyed for the past three weeks, apart from presenting to us, he has enjoyed pouring into our young people. And a part of his itinerary includes visiting various of our various Jamaican youths in the Women's Center. He visited yesterday. He said he had a wonderful time there, just pouring into them, just encouraging them, which is a great passion of his. He also went to the Meadowbrook High School today, where he spoke to the grade eight group, just to give them encouragement, you know? And our young people today, if it's one thing that they need, it is encouragement and support and love. Amen, church? So he's enjoying that immensely. He has also enjoyed hospital visits. He has been to the children's hospital where he has prayed for children there and staff. He has also been to the University Hospital of the West Indies where he's also prayed for persons there, patients and staff as well. Another passion of his. And another passion that he has that he mentions all the time is reading. Pastor Dutton loves to read. And he's currently enjoying the book, The Ultimate Ladder to Biblical Prophecy. That's one of the books he's now currently reading, which he thoroughly enjoys. So at this time, after the singing of this theme song, prepare your hearts for another spirit-filled presentation from our evangelist, Pastor Dr. Clive Dutton, who will once again, as he often says, mash up Satan.
Shall we bow our heads? Loving Father, it is by your grace and through your power that we are alive tonight. As being caught between the devil and you, Father, in what we call familiarly the great controversy. Your desire is that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But the devil wants to cut short our life. So tonight we rejoice because in the great victory we have emerged more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus Christ. Bless those online, Father. Looking on all over the world, we pray that you will guide each of us and help us to receive your truth. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to give, uh, I hope you invite all your friends out tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's subject is the eye in the dollar and the dollar in the eye. Now you have to, you have to be here. That is Revelation 13 in Bible prophecy. So you have to be here to hear that word. America in Bible prophecy. And the subject, if you have a one US dollar, make sure and bring it tomorrow night. But if you don't have a one US dollar, well, close down. But you have to have a one US. Look at it tonight. You will see some Latin. Novus Ordo Seclorum. You will see that. Okay? So don't miss that, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow night, tell all your friends. You online who could make it a come down. Yeah, we, we almost close up now for the fourth week. And you have never come. We'll make every effort to come. I am looking forward to see here as packed tomorrow night as on Sabbaths. You might tell me it's wishful thinking, but everybody's entitled to at least one wish. And that is my wish. Look at the ladies in red and black. All your real sing tonight, you know. And I wasn't inside here. It's new gen phone I was looking at. Got my phone home. So it was lovely. Who is the choir leader? I couldn't make out. What? You the, you the big lady? Have mercy. All right. Well, if you are Tchaikovsky, she had to be Mantovani. <laughs> All right. But, oh, you all did absolutely well. You know, I have ice cream home that from Devon's. A fresh supply. Yes, that um, Dr. Oliphant brought. So I will share some with Sister Dorothy tonight. Are you hearing me, Brajing? Everybody living differently, so all you can't get. I only have enough to share with all, all you neither. 
going to come back next time. <laughs> but you all did extremely well. And I am blessed. All right, to hear the women's choral. Have I said it right? The women's choral. By the way, the blend of the priest team was excellent too. Amen, brethren. Come on, encourage. Well, today, you know where I went today? I went yesterday to the teenage mother's home. Today, I went to Meadow Brook. They gave me all the form tools, boys and girls. Of course, Sister Dorothy was there, the next lady. And we had 276 children in the open space in the yard. No mic. But, Patrick, when God be for you. Did I hear you say amen, Patrick? They gave me 30 minutes. I took 42. And the children wanted more. Are you hearing me, Patrick? I told them about Joseph. All right. And Moses. And David. And, of course, I mix it with some stories. But we had a great time. So tomorrow morning at 7.30, you have to wake up early, you know. Or like 5 o'clock, you have to wipe your eyes, you know. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Wilmer School. I heard it's the first secondary school in the Caribbean. It's almost 300 years old. Yes. So I asked the principal, I said, tell me something. The coach for the England team that got killed here, in a hotel. He related to the founder. She said she don't know. But um, I, I got a lot of the history of the school. So tomorrow, I, you know, it's, it's co-ed, but I only have the boys. I have the form four boys, the form five boys, and the form six girls. And the principal informed me of the topics you would like me to handle. So I'm going there, brethren, eagerly anticipating my interfacing, I should tell you this. When I went to Barbados, the head prefect, it was a school of plenty of violence. They had the crips and the bloods in the school. And in that school, they tied the color ribbon, representing the bloods and the crips. And you know who held the principal? The principal was a, a lady. You know who the principal? The head prefect. And he was pretty muscular himself, and he confronted the gangs in the school, and he helped the principal a lot, all right? And you know something? What made me so proud? He was a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen, brethren. And he was the head prefect. Man, I ain't finished. I, up to now, I ain't finished compliment that boy. He was awesome. All right? So tomorrow night, all right, we're dealing with the rise of papal influence in America. You need to hear that subject. The eye in the dollar and the dollar in the eye. And I'm talking about the eye on top of the pyramid. With the rays of the sun, I'm going to deal specifically with that. I'm going to talk about the eagle. I'm going to talk about the claws of the eagle. The berries on one, all right, of its legs. And the olive trees, all right, on the other. The arrows, sorry, on the other. Okay? So you have to come tomorrow night. All right? If you have planned to die before, die Thursday. But you have to come tomorrow night. Amen, brethren? And bring a friend, brethren. Bring a friend. They don't hear these topics. The eye in the dollar and the dollar in the eye. Tonight, the subject is two Germans and the white robe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to read a text that is not on the screen. Revelation chapter 12, from verse 7. And this is a shocking text. Out of principal, I told you, from Cambridge University. And we used to debate this text. He's a big man. And I was a teenager in the school. And there was war in heaven. What happened in heaven, my dear friends? Do you expect heaven to a place would have war? No, you won't. Normally, you won't expect that heaven is a place that would have war, all right? So there was war in heaven, all right? So who was fighting? Michael and his angels fought against what? The dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. I say hallelujah. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? I am saying hallelujah for that. Michael fought against the dragon, and I want to tell you, 
Anytime Mike, the dragon is fighting Michael, Michael will win and the dragon will lose. So there was war and the dragon lost. And the great dragon was cast on that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which is even the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by what? Come on, come on. You don't know Revelation. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. So what our text is saying, they were prepared to die for Jesus. Verse 12 says what? Therefore what? Rejoice, ye heavens, and he that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. And can I tell you something? Every day, his time is getting shorter. It's time to be destroyed, wiped out of the universe once and for all, having been kicked out of heaven and replaced by the angel Gabriel. You remember that, my dear friends? The devil recognized, and having not recognized that pride comes before Paul, he launched a blistering attack on God's character. He accused God of being a despot. He accused God to Mother Eve of being an unreasonable guy, of being slightly psychotic, all right? And that God only wanted slaves in his kingdom. Huh? He told Mother Eve she should go ahead and disobey God. If she wanted to enjoy life, she was free to enjoy life. He told Mother Eve that the devil does, that Jesus didn't want anybody to enjoy life. He wanted to be large and in charge and enslave humanity. That is what he says. Then he told her, you shall not surely die. This was a contradiction. This was diametrically opposed to what God had told Mother Eve and Father Adam. This was in direct opposition to God. Let me tell you something tonight. The devil have mercy for darkness, but Jesus for light. The devil for hatred, but Jesus for love. Come on, my dear friends. The devil for revenge, but Jesus for forgiveness. That is important to know. The devil for eternal destruction, but Jesus for everlasting life. He claimed there was a positive internal reward for all those who disobeyed God but obeyed him. So he wanted loyalty. He wanted worship. And by the way, today, he still wants loyalty and he still wants worship. He covets the position of God. He thought that Christ would not come out of the tomb. But hallelujah, brethren. Thank God. We don't serve a dead savior. We serve a risen savior. He didn't want God, the son, to come out of the tomb. Here for the first time, evil is introduced. The author of evil is promoting evil in the Garden of Eden. Here for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is promoting evil, promoting himself as having a righteous character and God as a despot, as God as being selfish. Have mercy. He kidnapped the sense of reason that Mother Eve was supposed to have. And today, he continues his work of deception, destruction, and disappointment. Heard what I said? He continues the work of destruction and disappointment. Huh? That is what he continues. Think of these significant facts. Could I have your attention? The Garden of Eden was perfectly constructed by a perfect God. And yet the devil was able to convince Mother Eve and ultimately Father Adam that they should disobey God. Could you imagine that, my dear friends? The Garden of Eden was perfectly constructed. Uh, by a perfect God. Uh, there was no sin up to the point when Mother Eve had gotten inside by the tree. Uh, there was no sin on planet Earth. There were no diseases in heaven, for example. No water pollution. Uh, no fragile ozone layer. Uh, no unemployment. No AIDS. No rape. No incest. No pedophilia or gerontophilia. None of that. None of that yet. And yet the devil in heaven convinced one third of the angels. Did I hear you say amen? Brother Tchaikovsky, 
If the devil could do that in a perfect heaven, what on earth he wouldn't do in an imperfect earth? You understand where I'm coming from, brethren? Come on, let me hear you. If the devil, my dear friends, that's why I just mash him up. Uh, are you mash him up here? Just mash up or come up to mash him up? Like mashed potato. Uh -huh. Uh, if you could do that in a perfect heaven. I always wonder about that. He convinced one third of the angels. No unemployment in heaven, you know. No water shortage. No blackout. No internet shortage. Nothing. Have mercy. No corrupt government or opposition. Are you, no potholes in the road. Uh, you know in Trinidad we produce pitch. When you go by some roads, they're very holy. And that means plenty holes. <laughs> And yet the devil convinced one third of the angels. Huh? Where was their head, their mind, their, their sense of reasoning? Where was that? And I want to say tonight, and if I'm talking the truth, you shout amen. I want to say tonight that nobody in here or online is a match for Satan. Somebody say one. I, I, I want to know who is that. And let me say it again. Nobody online. You online in America and England and Caracas uh, and in India and in Nigeria, uh, all over the world, here in this gospel, nobody is a match for Satan unless, come on, unless you have what? The power of the Holy Ghost. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you can mash up Satan. Did I hear you say Amen. You could resist temptation. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, my dear friends, you get victory over sin. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you understand the scripture, including the toughest one, Daniel 11. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, brethren, uh, you are happy to proclaim the everlasting gospel. You are happy to tell your friends about Jesus. If you could have success in a perfect heaven and a perfect garden of Eden, you could imagine uh, why he has success in this imperfect, war-torn, Hurricane blasting, nuclear bombing, atomic bombing, homosexuality spreading, abortion practicing, promiscuity defending, pornographic accelerating, disobedient world. Are, are you hearing me, Prattring? And all those things he created. Let me tell you something. He will burn like that, you know. When the devil tells you about your past, you remind him about his barbecued planned future. Are you hearing me, Prattring? So hallelujah, God is an awesome God. Two Germans and the white rose, those are the exact pictures. The exact pictures. These two Germans, hands on Sophie's call, all right? They were Germans. They were university scholars. They frontally attacked Hitler, who was their prime minister, and defended the Jews. I believe these two are saved. They were Germans. You know what university they were attended when they were killed? They were decapitated, you know. That's how Hitler killed them. He took off their heads. And they had a white German pastor who was a Lutheran theologian, bright like that. In what you study, the literature, okay, brethren. You will come up with a name, all right, called Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hitler hit, hated the guy. When he was killed, just before the Allied forces took over, when he was killed, you know how Hitler killed him? He used piano wire and strangled him. They said hardened, cruel German soldiers cried when they saw Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So he was the role model because he defended Jews too. He concealed Jews in his home and in the churches of the Lutheran churches. And I told you that Hitler put a lot of pressure on the Adventist church. Because when he saw us keeping the Sabbath, he said they had to be Jews. And he went to every Adventist church. He had the spies go to every Seventh-day Adventist church to find out if there were Jews, people with Jewish blood in the church, who left Right, the Jewish religion and became semi Adventist, and everyone he discovered, he put them to death. So, by the way, it's not only the Jews he killed her. I want you to know that. All right, he was a persecutor, he was a despot. All right, he was a genocidal expert. So, these are two Germans. 
They printed a document called the White Rose. That's where I get the sermon tonight. All right? The White Rose. In the White Rose, they had in the front page, in bold capital, black letters, every word that Hitler speaks is a lie. Mm -hmm. That is what they put. And they were distributing it in the atrium of the university. And the janitor saw it, went to the Gestapo, and show them what these, this boy, these, these two siblings were producing. Sophie, of course, is the name of the girl. She became very famous last year, I should tell you. Her memory was brought back, resurrected, and hands. They were students at the University of Munich. And they died, and they were tortured. Remember, this department, the Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department, is about building bridges. God wants us to build bridges. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Let me tell you something. When you're in need and you pray to God, God blesses you, you know. Huh? Has God blessed you, brethren? Has God answered your prayer? Come on, let the devil hear. Has God answered your prayer? Look, look, look at the bridge building stories in the Bible. Number one, Joseph and Pharaoh. Pharaoh gave him his signet ring. That's in Genesis 41. Look at Jesus Christ, the good Samaritan and the wounded man. That's Luke chapter 10. Look at Christ and the Samaritan woman. All right? He was Jew, she was Samaritan, they were hated, they were outcast, they were despised. John chapter 4. And hello, she moved from a prostitute to a missionary. After one encounter with Jesus. Choir, yeah, you say amen. I mean, I compliment you all so much. I take back my compliments if you're careful, you know. Have mercy, brethren. <laughs> yes, doctor, how are you doing? You good? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus and Zacchaeus, are you hearing me, brethren? Jesus and Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was the most hated man. He was a tax collector. He overcharged and kept the interest. Uh, and in one encounter, uh, could I say something, brethren? There's a song that says, a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Come on. Uh. Makes it right, brethren. Uh, because he changes the mindset. He changes your pattern of thinking. That is what he does. Let me tell you, God is an awesome God. The Holy Spirit told me I must tell you this story. An Irish Catholic nun, they run, where, not too far from USC in St. Joseph, if you know Trinidad well, they run a plethora of schools. They have secondary at a certain level. They have upper secondary. They have nursery. They have a, you know, come into schools, you can't stop them. So this Irish nun, I didn't know who she was. So she called me and told me, Pastor, some of the children are having abuse in their homes, and I want you to come. Now, she had to be a very broad-minded woman, huh? To tell me to come as a Seventh-day Adventist to the school. You think I went? When I went a long time, but I had a problem. But you see, preaching, can I tell you something? I admire you, my dear. You see, Sabbath evening, you mobilize the young people to go out on the field. Yeah, uh, uh, that's what we should be doing regularly, so I, I admire you. You have a good day, why leader, you know? You got to, you know, so I'll say amen. <laughs> so hear what happened. I'm going out like how I went to the school today. I planned my program around the school. Brethren, I don't spend the whole day in the office. Why must I spend eight hours in the office? When so much people hear the gospel yet? A amen, brethren. Amen. We must know what matters most, you know, brethren. Are you hearing me, brethren? So I go in my Crusader, diabetic car. When I realized it's showing empty and I don't have a dime in my pocket. You think I study the gas tank? I serve in the auto of creator of all petroleum. <laughs> Jesus Christ, brother Nugent. Father Hilux are dead. All right? But I have a diabetic car. <laughs> have mercy. But when I close the door, a piece of it fall out, you know. Have mercy. Ooh! I say, Lord. I stopped the car. I said, Lord, it's empty. That means it have a little excess. I need $200. Brethren, I'm not inventing this. This is my story. This is my testimony. And I will always say, when I see people attacking the church seven days, huh? hypocritical seven days, attacking the church on Facebook, I just want to, as I was saying, listen, I, 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 are you hearing me, Brethren? I don't want to sit on the pulpit. Uh, are you hearing me, Brethren? But I went and I prayed to God. I said, God, I have to put some gas in this car. 
I want you to help me to get $200. And don't let me stall. If you must stall in the Catholic park, I wouldn't mind. All right? So I pray to God for $200. But you know, let me tell you what happened. You know, God is also an accurate God, you know. Huh? So you must pray for what you want. Did I hear you say amen? amen. I, I, are you hearing me so I say amen, Brother Inga? Brother Inga, I don't know about you, but I have to rejoice every day. I study the goodness of God. Come on. You have a Jamaican police woman. Huh? They had a big ceremony in Jamaica. Look, I know more about Jamaican than all of you. It best only give me the passport and go to Trinidad instead of me. And that will solve the problem. <laughs> this girl has a wonderful voice. And she sang about the goodness of God. She wished that Jamaican girl could sing. Why not tell you? And brethren, I tell you, I testify that God is good. And not only that he is good, you know, brethren, he is good all the time. Yes. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Yes. So let me tell you what happened. I don't know who was meeting. When I reached the school, pack up the car. All right? Still show it empty. And I pray for $200. So I went upstairs to the principal. It was a white Irish lady, 72 years old. She explained to me how the father's abusing somebody's throne. And by the way, this aristocratic school, huh? It's like Stella Maurice. <laughs> Don't tell nobody, Stella. <laughs> so listen, I went there and she gave me some young children, six to eight. But I was well prepared and I prayed for the spirit. And she stood up right there and she listened to me. I had them rhyme and chime and told them about casual space and intimate space. I discuss all the spaces. All right? Then I was finished. I tears in her eyes. She looked at her pastor. You don't have to come. You are Assembly Adventist pastor. And you come to this school to protect our children and our children are Catholic children. She says, you're comfortable doing that? I say, yes. All right. You're comfortable? I told her we don't judge people as a church. And we want all the children, and then I tell her, we want you to be saved too. I dropped that on the 72-year-old Catholic nun. She white like milk. She born the same day milk was born. <laughs> when I tell you, the girl white like milk there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The lady. Let me tell you how God is good. And he's good all the time. Come on, let me hear you say amen, brother. Yeah. She called me in the office. She pulled out her envelope. Before she said anything, I said, thank you, Jesus. $200 inside there. Did I hear you say amen? Because I want to pray for, you know what I study? I said, I pray for a thousand. <laughs> I said, I pray for a thousand. But I pray according to your faith be done to you. So I'll get it 200. Put the gas in the car, and that was it. But what I'm saying to you, brethren, is this. We must, there are different ways to witness. You see what the program you all have with the teenage mothers? That is witnessing. It's creative witnessing. See, we're going to the schools uh, for this week. That's creative witnessing. In other words, we must be constantly seeking God to find innovative ways uh, to spread the everlasting gospel. And you know what they introduced me in the school? They say he's a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. So the church get marks. And then they advertise the program. They say he in Andrew's memorial. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bridge building involves risk taking. But when you really want to witness in some areas, you have to take risk. Amen, brethren? And you can't like who everybody like. We must like everybody. Don't depend on your family to like some people. You know, brethren, in the church, we have to be careful. Huh? Because sometimes you only like the preferred ones. And the outcasts are cast out. Are you hearing me, brethren? But we, we must love everybody. Come on, Adenia, you say amen. Like a preaching heresy. We must love everybody. And by the way, let me tell you something. Huh? See this racism thing? We have to root it out. 
Uh, you hear me? When I go to New York and black guys talk to me about racism and anti-whiteism and things, I don't participate at all. Because I have found some of us as blacks as racial as the whites. And there is something the sociologists call counter-racism. You see me, Patrick? I want to go to heaven. I let prejudice put me in hell. Huh? You could come to church for a thousand years and be lost, you know. You believe that, Patrick? You could have ten offices on the church board and still be lost. Position will not save us. Popularity will not save us. Having a big fat bank account will not save us. What saves us is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we have got to understand that. Good Samaritan paid for the inn. Uses oil and wine. First aid. He uses Rolls Royce donkey. Do you know donkey was a Rolls Royce at the time? Mm -hmm. He defied the bandits. They were waiting there to hurt him. And he went to him. Huh? And he did what? And he bound up his wounds. Pour it in oil and wine. And set him on his own beast. And brought him to an inn. And took care of him. But I tell you something, brethren. I want to tell you this seriously tonight. Huh? We don't preach huh? because we want people to be saved. Baptized, not saved. We preach for people to be saved. Just to be baptized. We preach brethren. And we, because we love people. In other words, every revival we do is because of a heart that is springing with love. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Amen. Huh? He went up to him and bound up his wounds. He didn't know the man. He didn't know the man. Brother, we must love our friends. We must love our enemies. And we must love strangers. People we don't know. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. That is a Christian. And hello, he didn't know the man. And bandit clusters were all along the road. All right? The ecology of the 18 mile distance between Jerusalem and Jericho had clusters of bandits. And they believed in killing and robbing. That is what they used to do. And the guy in the full glow and sight of the bandits rescued this guy. The Bible is very clear, you know. The bandits beat him up and left him for dead. In other words, they didn't beat him up because they just wanted to beat him up. They wanted to kill him. All right? And this man intercepted the bandits. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pens. You realize what happened here? The bandit didn't only carry the man to the, host, the hotel and leave him there, you know. He spent the night with him. I, I, have you ever seen? Figure that out. He spent the night. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will pray thee. Lord have mercy. He had some resources as he went to the Jerusalem Memorial Church. Didn't have Andrews at that time. Huh? Have mercy. Major relational issues. There's a rift deepening in the Anglican Church over LGBT rights. LGBTQIA rights. The Nigerians have told the Anglican Bishop of England, what they told him, the day you legalize all of that, the Nigerian Church will start an independent Anglican Church. Are you hearing me, Pratring? That's why, Pratring, don't judge people. Because God has people everywhere. Come on. Am, am I hearing you, Brother Inga? God has people everywhere. He has people in the Catholic Church. He has people in the Baptist Church. He has people in the Muslim faith, in the Hindu faith. Come on, Brother Inga. In the Taoistic faith. God has people everywhere. Did, did I hear you say hallelujah? I want you to understand that tonight. So the rift is deepening in Uganda is the biggest rift. Because Museveni and his wife is a powerful woman too. Huh? They have led Gaya, um, Uganda for several years. And they are saying, no gay marriage. Have mercy. They don't want to have nothing to do with the LGBTQ. And I told you when Obama went to convince Museveni, you know what? He told Obama, you take your money, we keep our morality. 
that, that is a man, black African guy, Ugandan, and nobody, but nobody could convince him to go against God. Liberals versus conservatives. You know what he said? Same-sex unions are ungodly, devilish, and Nigerians will leave the global church. Talking about the global. I know you told that. The Archbishop of Canterbury, who is the head, the worldwide head of, of, that, of the Anglican communion. Let's look at another thing what's happening. Talks about the breakdown of relationships. Muslim militant turned suicide bomber in Java, killing an officer and wounding 11 people. You see that, Pratring? Muslim militant. This, oh, this world is not our home, you know, Pratring. Satan has this world, a lot of parts of his world wrapped up around his finger. And we must understand, understand that. Look at prophecy being fulfilled. 2 Timothy 3.1. This know also that in the last days, what day shall come, brethren? Come on, let me hear you say it louder. I'll say it again. I said it before. That word perilous is a Greek word, chalapoi. It was invented. So Paul, being a classical Greek scholar, used that particular word. To define the conditions of the last days. And when I see what Paul was saying, that word says chalapoi. You know what chalapoi means? You will live in constant expectation of death. That's right. There was a Greek military commander called Cleatus. And Cleatus used to call his cabinet functionaries, his officials, and suddenly tell them they have to die today. No reason given, but they have to die. So when Paul said, Nisto also, that the last is perilous time shall come. It means people will be living very uncertain lives. They wouldn't know what to expect. And death could come at any time. And they could be killed for no reason whatsoever. You know there are people in Jamaica and Trinidad killing for no reason. They just the devil in them. Uh, uh, am I talking the truth, Brothering? The devil in them, Brothering. They just have to kill. All right, and I want to understand that. And I saw somebody print something on Facebook today. Let me tell you something. It is not the only reason. But part of the reason for the bacchanal in Haiti is demon worship. Uh, am I talking the truth, Patrick? You could jump high. You could jump low. And those online could be vexed with me. But um, a lot of that, what is going on there? And I see, and I and Brother Fabian were discussing it this evening. You know what I'm seeing going on there? The key gang leader, who they say is a cannibal, you know. They say he feasts on his victims. The key gang leader is telling CARICOM, anytime you set a presidential council, this guy has to be there. He's talking about the head gang leader, who is a cannibal, you know. He said he has to be there. And every day, he's taking over more and more territory. He has Port-au-Prince uh, in, his, in his hands. He controls, brethren. With the power of demons uh, attaching him. But I hope Carry come and those men, American, those fellas know where that fella should go. Uh, because there'll be no peace in Haiti once people like him are wrong. Did I hear you say amen, brother? I mean, he's kidnapping people. He's torturing children. He's just a disaster. But you see, the Bible does not lie. These things should not come as a shock to us. Why? The Bible says what? This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men will be killed and tortured for no reason, decapitated. Look at ISIS. Ladies, look at ISIS, my dear friends. All right? Decapitating Christians. For men shall be what? Let's read it. It says what? Lovers of water. Their own selves what? Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. What? Disobedient appearance. Unthankful and holy without what? You know what's going on there? Truth breakers can't keep a promise. False accusers lying on you. Incontinent, fierce, despised of those that are good. You know what incontinent means to her? Without sexual control. The appetite for sex out of control. All right? In Indonesia, Adventists and Muslims have collaborated to rebuild churches and mosques. Huh? So when the mosque are burned down by radical Christians, the Seventh-day Adventist church reaches out and helps to rebuild the mosque. And when the radical Islamic terrorists, oh, the terrorists, bombard and burn our churches, good Muslims come and help us. And I think that is excellent. That's what God expects. So building relationships with the endangered. Hans call and Sophie's call. 
who German students defended the Jews and poured scorn on Hitler. Defended the Jews and poured scorn on Hitler. They published a journal called the White Rose. I told you about that, right? They were arrested, they were tortured, and they were beheaded. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Let's read that together. It said what? All right. What happened is a bomb. The Haiti gang leader there. The, 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 choir, the choir, the female choir doing violence there. All I hear is plaques, plaques. All right, have mercy. So what happened to them, brethren? Pay attention, they were what? Uh, arrested, what? Tortured and what? Uh, for doing what? For doing good. Uh, are you hearing me, brethren? They were protecting Jews. And because they were doing that, all right, they were sacrificed. Hands on Sophie's call. Brethren, the planet is in chaos. Are you hearing me, Patrick? The planet is in chaos. Let's read Genesis 6, 3 to 7. It says what? What it says, Patrick? And the Lord said, my water, spirit shall not water. Always what? Strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Now let me ask you a question. Why is this important? Why is this important, Genesis 6? Because Christ says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be, all right, just before he comes. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Let me ask you a question. Is it similar today as it was in the days of Noah? Could we control the child, please, brethren? Who have been running up and down in church? Teach him the values from now. All right? And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be what? A hundred and how long? And twenty years, now watch this carefully here. There were giants in the earth. And also after that, all right, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, have mercy. God, and God saw, what did God see, brethren? What did God see? That the wickedness of man, hold a minute there. Is God seeing wickedness today upon this planet? God is seeing homosexuality, wickedness. He's seen abortion, wickedness. He's seen criminality, wickedness. That is what he is seeing. So when God looks at the earth, now, in 2024, he has to conclude that it resembles the days of Noah. And brethren, that every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Imagine there are nations in the world want to legalize bestiality. Huh? Having, humans having sex with animals. But you know, let me tell you something. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart when he saw it was taking place. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. I want to tell all those online, the time to repent is now. I want to tell you in the church, the time to repent is now. The time to turn to God is now. The time to open the door of your heart is now. The time to adopt the lifestyle of Elijah and Elisha and John the Baptist. Come on, and Joseph. Huh? That time is now. The time to cry out like Isaiah. Woe is me if I preach on the gospel. The time to cry. Like the weeping prophet Jeremiah, that time is now. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the false of the earth, for it repented me that I have made them. You don't know I'll preach for how long? How long do I preach for? 120 years. Nobody came in the ark. Nobody responded. They laughed at him. They jeered him. They mocked him. I have been to places in the world. If you pull out a Bible, you are looked upon as awkward. I went to Holland. We couldn't find a spot to pitch a tent. So we rented, well, in Rotterdam, they rent the Pentecostal church. So they worship on Sabbaths there. And then for the week, it's the first place I had a revival. No service on Friday night. They couldn't get a place to conduct Friday night service. It was strange to me. I, I, that was a record breaking for me. You have a crusade and no Friday night worship. 
That's the devil's plan. But I want to tell you something, brethren. You see, God, God is an awful, awesome God. And while in the Dutch Reformed Church one night, a family of five came up to the altar. You know what happened? Three teenage children, 15, 18, and 19, gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. Huh? They shocked the other young people. Gave their hearts. You know what I saw in Holland there? In that revival, there were two white folks. An Iraqi white girl was friendly with a Dutch white boy. Huh? Both of them got married. And both of them got baptized. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Amen. Let me tell you something. God could finish the work without us, you know. Could I, could I underscore that, brother? Am I talking the truth? God could finish this work without us. But praise God, Brother Inger. He has chosen us uh, to be partakers uh, of his divine mission. Uh, and that is why every day we live, uh, we must tell people about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. About the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Now I want to say this, Brother Inger. I want to talk the truth. There's a question that came up to me about, is Jesus in the Quran? Yes. Muslims believe that Jesus will be returning to the earth. It's in the Quran. They don't believe he's God. Have mercy. They believe he's too weak to allow people to nail him to the cross. Huh? And put a crown of thorns so they say he can't be God. They don't believe in the Trinity. But in the Quran, you will see the following Isa al Masi. That is why recently, when we had an audience in England with Iranian Muslim scholars, they said Adventists are too quiet on the second coming because they have the second coming of Christ in, in the Quran. But you hear about Hans and Sophie Skull uh, who were decapitated and before they were decapitated because they were doing the humane thing. They were defending Jews. Uh, they weren't ultra-nationalists like Hitler and his army of beasts and vampires. Uh, have mercy. Uh, they were doing the right thing. They were serving God. They were obeying God. They had the character of Jesus Christ in them. And look how they suffered. You know what the Bible says? Huh? All that live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. And so they were killed. And their mentor, Dietrich von Hofer, huh? he was told stay in England. He was told the minute they go back to Germany, Hitler will kill you. But he said, no, I have to go. No, I have to go and defend the Jews and the gypsies who Hitler is killing. Huh? Like water, I have to defend them. And he went back there and Hitler had him promptly arrested. Huh? And he was strangled to death with piano wire. How will this world end when God looks down on this planet huh? and seeing people being decapitated? When God looks down upon this planet and seeing people in Haiti being eaten as they are breathing, brethren. Come on. How does God feel when he sees in the Episcopal Church in California uh, a priest marries 10 gay couples how does god feel my dear friends how does god feel huh when a couple got married and when they went back home the bride saw huh? the boyfriend of the husband and, and all of them are living together in the same place alternating sexual activity how does god feel how does god feel when he sees putin bombing ukraine how does god feel uh, when he sees the Israeli weapons, my dear friends, uh, uh, taking out children on the Gaza Strip. Uh, let me tell you something. God is saying, soon I will say time up. In the days of Noah, he said time up. Did I hear you say amen, brother? In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God told, the, the two angels told Mother Lot and Lot and the children and the in-laws, uh, get out of Sodom. Run for your life. And tonight, I am saying to you in the church, ah, uh, Run from evil. Come on, somebody say amen. Run from evil. Run from immorality. Run from Sabbath breaking. Run from Ten Commandment breaking. Those online, I tell you, give your heart to God tonight. Jesus is coming soon. And there's a song I love. Lift up the trumpet. Come on. And what? And what? And what? And loud, let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Let me tell you, tell you here, and those online, when he comes the next time, he ain't coming as a baby in a manger. When he comes the next time, you know you come in? As king of kings. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. That's how he's coming, my dear friends. 
He's coming as Lord of Lords. The time to give up sin is tonight. I tell the church that, and I tell those online that. The time to give up sin is now. The time to be faithful to God is now. Don't wait for tomorrow. We could die tonight. Am I talking to the truth? Don't wait for tomorrow. Now is the time to give our hearts to Jesus. Let's read this last text. Revelation 19. It says what? Verse 11. And I what? Come on, say it, Lord. Let the devil hear you reading the word. And I saw what? Uh, heaven open and behold what? Uh, a white horse. A uh, symbol of purity, not so? And he that sat upon him was called what? Faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So God is going to use righteousness as his standard, as his measuring rod. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. To make war. What happens in verse 12? His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crumbs. And he had a name written, but no man knew but he himself. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. And he was clothed uh, with what? With what? With a vesture water dipped in blood. And his name is called water. The word of God and the armies which were in heaven, what? Followed him upon water. I think that is going to be an awesome sight, huh? But at the second coming of Christ, Christ on a white horse. Huh? And then he has millions and billions of angels on white horses too. A flying army. Come on, somebody say amen. Come in to rescue the righteous from the clutches and jaws huh, of Satan. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Load in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go it what? A sharp sword. That with it, he should smite the nations. All of them who pass in laws favoring homosexual marriage. They should read this text. Are you hearing me, preaching? Those online who favor gay marriage. And you know people who favor gay marriage. Tomorrow, uh, send Revelation 19.15 to them. Out of his mouth, go it a sharp sword. That with it, he should smite the nations, uh, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Have mercy. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Have mercy. You know what he had? And he had on his vesture and on his tie a name written. Come on, come on. Let me hear you, Patrick. King of kings and Lord of lords. Let me tell you something. Biden came on the scene, and he will go. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Colonists right now in Jamaica, and one day he will go. There's no permanent prime minister. In my country, Rowley came, and he will go. Uh, are you hearing me? Rishi Sunak, he's a billionaire, and his wife is a billionaire. They don't need money. They could rule England for free. Are you hearing me, Patrick? But one day he will go. Somebody in England told me, sooner rather than later. I don't live there, so I don't know. But I know one day he will go. Did I hear you say amen? Yeah. Narendra Modi in India was creating so much political bacchanal and division. Huh? With the Hindu nationalist brethren. One day, he will no longer be prime minister. Ramaphosa uh, in South Africa. Huh? Who is no, you can't compare Nelson Mandela with Zuma or he. Huh? Can't compare. You know what's bad about it? If you have white rulers and they're handling the treasury and ripping off the people, you see, that's one thing. But when your own black people take over power and they're just as corrupt, I find that it's very hurtful. But you see, God not in this color thing. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. And we have to live like Jesus. And when God comes, he's looking at color and race, you know, and class, you know. When God comes, is what has been our relationship with Jesus. So let's read that again. And he had in his vesture, under his tie, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So, brethren, I can hear the trumpet sounding. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? The King is coming. The King is coming. Come on, praise team. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. 
Jesus is coming again. Cheer up your pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Come on, continue the song. Coming again. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. If you want to go to heaven, can you stand? Hallelujah, we will sing that song. Trumpet, Sing it out and loud let it ring. Jesus, Jesus is coming again. Share up the pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. Oh, come is coming again I want to make an appeal tonight before we sing the second verse those online can't see you we have a special appeal give your heart to God all the signs are telling us that Jesus is coming soon am I talking the truth brethren that's all we talk out here and before we sing the second verse I want to appeal to those in the congregation tonight you want to be ready when Jesus comes. I want you to come up to the altar for special prayer. You must love to come to the altar, you know, brethren. It's a sacred move. It's an act of faith. You want to be, have mercy, ready huh? when Jesus comes. Let's sing the second verse. I appeal to you in the congregation. Go in tongues, proclaim it, he plays. Oh, yes. Jesus is coming. You want to be ready when again. Jesus comes. Just come up to the altar. Come up to the altar. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming again. Oh, yes. Oh, coming again. Sing the last verse. He puts a verse. Jesus. Jesus is coming again. Uh, knowledge, knowledge increases. increases. Men run. To and fro. Jesus. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Coming again, Hallelujah. Coming again, Jesus is coming again. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, the people here in the church, Andrews Memorial Church, and those online, as we look at the chaos at the madness in the world we know you must come very soon lord you are anxious to come to rescue your people but lord we thank you for those who are responding to the gospel all across the world lord in india there are people who are responding to the gospel lord in america in Indonesia, in Afghanistan, Lord, even in China, where's a sin to have you? It's like a crime to have a Bible in your hand. There are people who are giving their hearts to you. Lord, in Nigeria, we had this awesome thing where three ABN radios were being distributed and the radios run out. And oh God, we got a report that new radios were being distributed by angels. Lord, we say to you be the glory. Amen. And amen. To you be the glory. You have the power. You can do what you want when you want. So Lord, save your people tonight. 
Lord, save your people tonight. Change our hearts. Help us to realize if any man be in Christ, he would be a new creature. Take away the stony heart of flesh, of stone, and give us, give us a heart of flesh. David committed adultery and murder. And in Psalm 51, 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, when he prayed that prayer, your Holy Ghost changed him. So Lord, tonight, may your Holy Ghost change us. And not just us, but our sons and daughters who have wandered far from home. Change us tonight, O oh God. Seal our decision. Help us to have an appetite for your word, for your grace. Lord, there are people who have left the church. We are praying for them tonight. There are people who have left and have no desire to be rebaptized, who don't want to enjoy sweet fellowship. Oh God, trouble them tonight. Lord, we are saying tonight on this planet, all over the world, trouble those who have no desire to serve you. Although they once walked with you, trouble them, oh God. And may you get the victory tonight, Father. So when they arise tomorrow, they will find the nearest church. Have mercy and give their hearts to Jesus. Lord, we know you have all power. All knowledge. And even before we sin, you know what we are going to do. So thank you for your mercy. Lord, there are people in the church who are downright ungrateful. But tonight we are grateful. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for Calvary's cross. We are grateful for your word. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for protecting us. And so until tomorrow night, when the subject will be, the eye and the dollar, and the dollar in the eye. Have faith in God, Jesus is your best friend. Have faith in God, he will save you till the end. Have faith in God, he saves you by his grace. Have faith in God, one day we shall see him face to face. Have faith, dear friend, in God. If you love the word tonight, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. You may return to your seats for the final phase. Amen, church. Were you blessed? Yes. Were you refreshed? Yes. Do you feel energized? Yes. Absolutely. Pastor Dottie, we want to thank you once again for those timely reminders of how important it is for us to find creative ways to spread the gospel and also to continue to have faith in God. Thank you, Pastor Dottie. Also want to thank all those who participated in this evening's program, Sister Glennis Green, who did our opening prayer, our magnificent praise team, Dr. Cornwall, who remind us, reminded us about the importance of magnesium. And she also reminded us that we can find magnesium in avocado, pumpkin seeds, and black beans. Let us take our health seriously and continue to have those foods that help to enrich us with magnesium. I want to thank Brother Kevin Davis, who did our offertory, and of course the Women's Chorale, whose director's new name is Montovani. Got it right? And of course, Tchaikovsky and the other gentlemen. Thank you so much for your music which enriches the worship experience. Can you imagine worship without music, brethren? Something would be missing. Something would definitely be missing. So as we close, just want to encourage everybody to take someone with them tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's topic is the eye in the dollar and the dollar in the eye. Will we all be here? Yes?
Will we all be inviting someone? Certainly we will. So I want to thank you once again for coming out. And at this time, the praise team will take us out with our theme song. But before they do, as Dr. Dottin has always reminded us to have faith in, Jesus is your best friend. Have faith in, he will love you to the end. Have faith in, his spirit descends like a dove. Have faith in, he fills you with his love. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Oh, mm-hmm. 